Hi gang, Elizabeth here with Dandy Soap on the DandelionSoap.com Dandy Soap channel. And today's DIY for Christmas, this is on day two, we are going to make a top hat. I'm sure you can see that design coming through. I have here a Maxwell House coffee can. You can use any coffee can. You can even use a creamer can. The silver plate from the kitchen department of Dollar Tree. This is the fabric burlap, 10 and a half inch by 12 foot long buffalo check from Walmart. Some contact paper, some Waverly chalk paint. I'll be using black to put on this, the ink, and also your Mod Podge. You wanna have your Mod Podge. Definitely your glue gun, and if possible, Gorilla Glue, and you will be using high temp. So let's get started. The first thing we want to do right off the bat is go ahead and base coat our plate. Then the next thing we will do is we'll take the lid off of this coffee can container, and we're actually going to glue it to the bottom. And what that's going to do is allow us to take the round shape for our top hat but our top hat is actually going to be a dented top hat we're going to take advantage of these crevices and these coves and fill them in with floral picks so if you do not glue a lid or don't have a lid for yours don't sweat it because it's not going to be a problem so let's base coat our plate and we're going to be wrapping this in contact paper and then any fabric, burlap, ribbon, mesh, whatever you select to wrap your jug, your container in will work sufficient. The contact paper is just to kind of hold, just get a smooth surface going so they'll allow for us to be able to glue our fabric on and be more efficient about moving the project along. Be right back. To get your Mod Podge to be smoother and more and for your Waverly chalk paints or any of your paint to adhere very well, you don't have to scruffy it up. You can actually use Mod Podge. If you're using a chalk paint, you could use Mod Podge. And all that's going to do is give you some extra insurance. Uh, or you can paint your surface, then Mod Podge it. It's strictly up to you. If you use Mod Podge, make sure you dampen your sponge Ring out all the excess water to where it's just damp, and you'll get a more efficient and smoother um, coat throughout your project. You do not have to do the back unless you just absolutely want to do the back. I'm not concerned about my back. I'm probably going to be bringing that fabric down and around uh, the hat part and underneath it and then gluing it directly to this plate. So I'm just worried about this surface only. Okay, guys, I'm taking a few pieces of cardboard and from off of just products that I've opened. And I'm going to place that there, and then I'm going to take my Dollar Tree duct tape, and I'm going to tape that. Now, if you don't want to do that, what the tape is doing is it builds this out so that I can assure myself... It's going to be more rounded on this side because I only want a single dent on the one side. So whenever I go to put the contact paper around this, I'm going to get a better roundedness out of it. So that's all that's for is just kind of filling in the gap. That's all we're doing, just DIYing just like we always do, just filling in the gap so that we don't have any hollows. And you can use just pure duct tape or painter's tape, whichever you like, to go through that area. It's not going to hurt a thing. Just sometimes the cardboard being underneath that makes it a little firmer so there's not such a fall in when I get ready to tape that. It's working like DIY sheetrock, <laughs> if you will. I suggested that if you haven't done it before, if you'll use Mod Podge before you ever put a coat of paint on to a metal plate, you will get better adhesion 
and more consistent stroke and you will most of the time you don't even have to put a second coat on it but i failed to do that and i got in a hurry and i put my paint on there already so i'll go back with a second coat and a third coat this is actually the second coat if i had to put the mod podge on there prior to painting this would already be coated and it dries fast and you get a more adhesive contact just a FYI also um, remember we're not going to be worried about the center because we're going to be gluing the can down to the center so if you're like me I just go ahead and do it because I'm I'm going at it and it's just easier that way I don't have to worry about if I didn't get my can just centered or something's poking out and getting and might be, get seen so I'm not really worried about it, but this center part is not really a big deal uh, because we're not going to be seeing that after we glue our can into place. And we just want to make sure this outside in edge of our brim is good and painted. So I'm going to let that sit and dry and we'll move to the next step. The next step is to go ahead and take our lid from off of our container and we're going to glue it to the bottom of our container and if you see there's like a round circumference there and that lid should fit just like that um the reason is this will make our hat be more rounded when we get ready to wrap it so we're going to glue this upside down just like that the lid where the print is showing on top until we get everything glued down and that's going to hold and it will be glued to the bottom of our plate so I'm going to use some hot glue and go over this bottom. I'm going to add some extra hot glue. And I do have my temp on high for my glue gun. Just in the areas where there where will actually be making contact. I'm just doing that for a little more added security. As y'all know, I call this glue insurance. <laughs> so glue assurance, my glue insurance. And I'm using the Gorilla Glue as usual. So I have more tact and it just works really good about giving me that extra hold and tact that I like. Really, really. Now, as you can see, I want that area to be smoother. Because we are using the top glued to the bottom to give us a more rounder circumference to this container, we may have to fill this out. And the only way I know to do that is to, once again, use duct tape. Otherwise, we could have just cut the center from out of our lid. But in order for us to get that rounder circumference without having to add cardboard or work extremely hard to get that out of this particular container it's just easier to glue it to the bottom because this top is really uh, not that big a deal I'm just making sure that I have an easy time of putting my contact paper on here and that I'm not going to have that ridge in the top of my top hat because I'm not going to be covering it that much with the floral hanging down it's not going to be draping over the side if it was i would not even worry about this but because my floral is not going to be draping down the side i need to round this out and that is going to be the easiest thing for you guys to do is do what i'm doing you can use any kind of tape you can boil this contact paper at dollar tree for a buck so i'm not worried about having extra rolled off and I pretty much wrap it around there. I put me a small crease. And then I can lay my ruler, draw me a line, and cut it. Now the easiest way to go about this, guys, is just like many of us have brought, have wrapped some awkward Christmas presents. You're going to wrap your container just like an awkward Christmas present. And when you get up here to this lip area, 
don't overwork it don't over sweat it because we are going to be pushing the fabric down inside and concaving it because inside is where we can put a flower arrangement all right so don't overthink this thing remember this is contact paper it is not wallpaper no one's going to see this because you're just creating a smooth surface so you can adhere your fabric to the outer part of your container or on your most smoothest side the only thing that we're worried about making complete contact is all through the center all the way around only in the center okay do not try to worry about doing these sides yet we're going to do that last we want to do just through the center so you guys if you've used contact paper just get your edge undone and start rolling it out and just keep your container in the center i don't know 15 cents worth here maybe i don't know no big deal just have fun with it like me just giggle your way through it you'll work it out you'll figure it out just the main thing with crafts guys don't get frustrated i mean if you have to walk away take you a coffee break take you a bathroom break go sit down and watch television call a friend you know don't get frustrated it is crafts it's just having fun playing we're just grown adults playing this is our playtime like kids get to have at school okay so I'm getting around to the other side and that's where I duct taped it I'm just trying to get around my container here where it's got that dent it's going to try to go sideways and that's okay you guys stay at it so i've got my contact paper laid down all around my coffee container and i folded the paper to the inside like so because remember this will have a it's going to have fabric the fabric's going to come down inside of this a little bit and so the inside will have floral arrangements or whatever because on the outside it's going to be our top hat so we on the outside it's going to be our top hat so we're going to be putting fabric around this the burlap that i'm using for the buffalo check and so now we can glue this down to the plate if your plate is ready, if you've got it prepped and painted, um, I use some lights on my top hat. So they'll be out here on the outside as well. And uh, fancy it up really pretty. But uh, this is so exciting. Now we get to glue down our container to our plate. I always look around on my plate to see what is the best side, you know, what I like the best. And so now go ahead and get your glue. And I mean, don't be stingy, guys. I mean, lay it to it. You're going to lay it to it. And I mean, just go to town. And make sure you go kind of close over here. And we're going to put some reinforcement glue there. But I've got mine on high. And you could use E6000, but it's really not necessary. Not with this being as flat as it is and designed the way that it is. I, it's, I just don't see I just don't see the point in E6000 for this particular craft. It can just so easily be placed and uh, put on there. If you wanted to, you, this has dried. And cooled off we're going to be putting our fabric on it and if you noticed i put my dent on this side this is where i want it so that when i start laying my fabric i'm actually going to go extra here so it'll go into the dip and so everything is looking pretty good the fabric that i'm using is ten and a half inches tall 
which is more than sufficient. So basically, I'm going to roll out extra, and then I'm going to place the rest of it down in the top of it and glue it down. So the way we're going to work this, so just the same as we did our contact paper, we're going to wrap our fabric around this. Now, my contact paper can be seen slightly, almost like a lace effect in the background behind my fabric. And I'll be honest with you, I am going to utilize that. I'm not going to cover that up. I'm really liking how that is looking. So the difference will be tucked inside and we'll glue it down. Now, if you are doing the dented top hat like me, then if you're doing a print like this, you got to be really, really careful. So what you're going to do is you're going to push in and kind of model it before you start gluing anything. You see how that lifted up there? We don't want that. You want to pull downward anytime you're dealing with something like that. Pull downward. Instead of letting it slide upward, pull it downward. And then kind of get that situated and know that that's where it's going to fit. Uh, to give it some insurance, you can start gluing there and then go around and then you can glue that into place once you meet over there. Um, each about the short and the tall and something just told me to get both and I started to put one of them back and it was literally the last two that Walmart had. Now with it being Walmart, it's not to say that they won't get more in because that got hit pretty hard. But don't sweat it. If you have regular fabric, guess what? That works just as great. And had I not found this, I would be doing this with some regular fabric, which I have ton flip down your fabric. Remember, you have a square that you've made into a round, and then the inside is actually round. And we want to try to just position that fabric where it's kind of standing up before you glue it down. Now, you don't have to glue it down. It'll probably be okay, but well, I'm dealing with the burlap. Mine is a little bit stiffer, and it's probably going to need that little bit of assistance. Now, remember, you cannot focus on the inside. You have to focus on the outside. This is for appearances, okay? So you just need to focus on what the outside appearance is going to look like to someone who comes walking up on your top hat. Don't focus on the inside because you're going to have stuff stuck in there. You're just worried about the external cosmetic appearance, okay? We want to so have your Christmas florals in hand and ready to go. So we have our hat ready now. We've got the inside glued in, and I have added a two-inch wide ribbon. This is the burlap that came from Dollar Tree. So if you guys have the two-inch, that'll work perfect there. The one with the lace didn't look so good. This pick I got from AC Moore when I did my haul there and got that for about a dollar and 25 cents. So, I have a surprise for you guys. I added lights, and look, I've hid it in the cove I told you about, the dent that's in the hat. And so, these are the little copper lights that you can get in the floral department at Dollar Tree. And so, if you were coming upon this and saw it sitting, it would just look like a top hat. And what's even more great is I've hidden the battery pack in that cove. And guys, this floral pick is just sitting down in there. I have not glued it. It's not necessary. I can tuck that in. I can change it out at another date. I just have it pushed in there and the battery pack fit in there perfectly. And then the lights, because of the copper wire, I fed it down behind my burlap ribbon. The ribbon is only glued here and because of the wire being narrow I was able to slide that down in between and tuck it in to where you couldn't even see it. And you can walk up on this. That's what they'd see. 
also I can add my poinsettia down in the hat. This is my small one. She has not bloomed out yet. And I can just tuck her full inside. But you can put a live plant in here. Or you could very well just put some artificial ones in there. But I did want... I, I really hate that you guys cannot see this any better. But I promise I will take some photos of it so that you can get a better look at it but this thing is just absolutely beautiful with its lights and everything but i will do um uh, some pictures of it and hopefully you'll be able to see it better so we're at the end of our diy project for today and you guys if you're viewing this YouTube and you really like it, please give me a thumbs up. Share it with family and friends on all your social media. Join me on Facebook and chat with me and be my friend. And uh, whatever you do, if you haven't subscribed already, perhaps now you will. And so until the next DIY, you guys have a wonderfully crafty, dandy day.